the four laws of creation and how they are made manifest in my life. Ham Ida Four Bashar Metaphysical Concepts Metaphysical Concepts Section 1 Now we come to the idea that, in your vernacular, is termed metaphysics. With the blending from third to fourth density, you are now able to begin to understand how many of the ideas you have previously held to be metaphysical, that is more than physical, can also, to some degree, be included in what is becoming your more rarefied, more accelerated physical reality in fourth density, as you will come to know it. You will begin to realize that all these ideas that you have considered metaphysical will fall into place as simply more or less symbolic, separated viewpoint ideas of your own abilities, your own connections, put into frameworks that would allow you to function with those abilities in a more or less acceptable manner according to whatever mores were prevalent in your society at the time you were exercising these abilities publicly. Thus, you have created many symbolic ideas that you have placed under one heading you call metaphysics to define and describe the action of the abilities you have always had and always will have. But you chose to make connections for these abilities by creating symbols in physical reality that would represent these powers that you found yourself in possession of without necessarily having to point a finger at anyone for doing something that was not allowed in the society at the time. Now, you will find that in the very beginnings of these ideas, when you first created the idea of separation of yourself from all that is, these abilities were then, when exhibited, attributed to the idea of the deities, whether one or many, you believed in and had created to exist outside yourselves. Simply, you could always point your finger at something that could be above reproach. It could not be called to task for expressing itself in that way, as it was expected that the gods should express themselves in mysterious ways. Thus, the first idea of metaphysics extended from assigning these abilities to some supposedly greater power than yourselves, and in this way, as you sought to define these greater powers within a limited perspective, you began to assign aspects and I'll say, trappings to these deities that would explain some of these powers in ways that you could interpret through objects you were familiar with in day-to-day -day life. Thus, your intuition, your imagination, allowed you to make symbolic connections between certain objects and certain aspects you had assigned to these deities, having thus projected that portion of yourself outside yourself and created the idea of these deities, you allowed yourself to then feel that these objects that symbolically represented these aspects of these deities could also, in themselves, contain the same powers, and these powers could be utilized, coaxed, extracted from these objects so that you could be in communication, consciously, with these deities you had created, but did not know you were creating. In this way you find that the things of nature were first used, utilized as the symbols. Plants, rocks, twigs, animals, crystalline forms, became refined over a period of years into more modernized versions of these ideas. Twigs into wands, crystals into crystal balls, and markings, the idea of symbolic representation, into writings, runes, cards, and so forth. Still, you could transfer these abilities to these objects and stay in touch with these aspects of these deities you had created, even though your civilization became more and more modern. Recognize that much in your society still holds to the belief that it is the objects themselves, which contain the power. You are now beginning to realize, in recent times of your counting, that each and every one of you actually exhibits the power, the ability to sense remotely to know, to pre-c-o-g-n-i-z-e -E yourself, to create future memory, to recognize yourself, to create past memory, re -c -o -g -n -i -z -e. In this way, you are now beginning to create the idea that the tools of metaphysics are simply this, only tools, and they are symbolically representative of the abilities and the powers that you yourself contain. Now, many times, you will still find that many of those practicing what your general society considers to be metaphysical attributes, whether it be palmistry, tarot card reading, healing, psychic functioning, or what have you, many of these individuals exhibiting these traits still, 
to some extent, will remove these abilities, the source of these abilities, from themselves and place it on a greater power than they perceive themselves to be. Now, understand, we are not saying that there is no creator that recognizes itself as a single entity. There is, but also the creator recognizes itself not only as a single entity, but as the conglomeration of all entities that are created within it, and, in a very holographic way, it recognizes that each entity it has created reflects the totality of the whole creator, and thus is, in itself, actually the whole creator, since to the creator, that which it can think is real realty. Thus, the concept becomes the actual dimension of experience and each and every being exhibiting these traits finds that it is its own source, his or her own source, of these abilities. Each individual, thus, being the creator, and in your society, since, to some degree, you are still choosing to create the idea of separation of the event of your life from yourself, rather than as yourself, then, many times, even though you may recognize that you have these abilities yourself, many times you will still choose to create a symbolic tool to allow you to trigger these abilities within you, to re -E, these abilities within you, to create past memory, and pre -E, to create future memory of these abilities, and focus them in your present application through the mechanism that is called channeling. Now, many times in your metaphysical jargon, the idea you call channeling or, as you used to call it, mediumship, will represent something very specific to you. Your colloquial vernacular will have it that the channeler or medium will be allowing the spirit of a deceased individual, deceased consciousness, non-physical consciousness, to inhabit their physical form and speak through them, or to be able to sense the communication from the non-physical consciousness and speak for them. Now, while this is, in a sense, a possibility, recognize that the idea, intrinsically, basically, foundationally, that you call channeling is any function of creation from higher self to physical self. Thus, music is channeling, painting is channeling, any kind of creativity in any endeavor at all is channeling in a sense. Thus recognize, simply that, first and foremost, the vernacular of metaphysics on your planet as it exists now, many times, will find that all of the practitioners, the conscious practitioners, that is, subscribe to specific schools of thought, and still recognize, even though they are the conscious practitioners themselves, a differentiation and a separation between what they are doing and what any other practitioner is doing. There is no unification. And there are just as many theories for why the practitioners are doing what they are doing as there are practitioners. Simply recognize that every practitioner is a channeler, even the unconscious ones. You are always channeling, channeling the energy of your higher consciousness into your physical reality for whatever purpose you wish to express it. The symbols that you have created in metaphysics have allowed you to become consciously aware of your own channeling abilities, consciously aware of the fact that you create your own reality, and this is the common bond for all practitioners, conscious and unconscious, that you are creating your reality. Now, recognize that many of your directions of sensing will be representative of that which you innately know, but find you can only ascribe to certain methodologies of perspective and so you have created the different disciplines to allow for all the different aspects which you have created in physical reality, out of the consciousness and the mentality from which you function, to give you this idea, this illusion of physical reality. Therefore, you have the ideas you call astrology to determine the aspects of your predetermination and freedom of choice, which you call fates and destinies. You have the idea of palmistry to detail the physicalized representation of these choices. You have the card reading to detail not only the physiological but the emotional patterns which you have created in creating your life. You have the idea of psychic sensing to allow you to divine the belief structures and the emotional and the physiological structures. You have created many different levels of tools to allow you to function on whatever aspect or level of understanding that you wish to create. Simply remember that you have created yourself to be this way. Now, again, 
All of these ideas are simply tools. The individuals utilizing the tools are the ones exercising the sensing, the powers. Now, astrology will be, to some degree, an exception, in that not only is it a subjective tool, but it does, to some degree, represent vibrational patterns of agreement within the overall mass consciousness choices that have been made. To some degree, it does reflect a sensing of the mass unconscious and subconscious, and you bring it to the surface, through this tool you call astrology, your relationship, not so much to the idea of the stars and the planets, but to yourselves, to other aspects of your own consciousness, symbolically represented by the stars and the planets, in terms of the level of the vibrations they represent to you, which is equal to the vibrations of your higher consciousness, symbolically, in an archetypal fashion. You will find that all the ideas of palmistry, leaf reading, card reading, crystal ball gazing, direct psychic sensing, psychometry, and so forth, are simply all the same type of extension of sensing, the same type of utilization of your knowingness, and in this way, you are creating specific triggers which, in and of themselves, because of the choice you have made, reflect certain portions of ideas that the ones exhibiting the powers are exploring about themselves in their own physical life. Thus, someone can easily read, in a sense, the reader, by seeing what approach they have taken, and exactly how much of the idea, of the total idea of themselves, is apparent in the particular methodology that has been chosen by that person expressing themselves in that manner. Now, the idea also of crystal gazing will be a different kind of sensing, in that the tool in question, the crystal, will represent a symbol, again in the mass consciousness, and will reflect the orderly matrix of energy that the consciousness is in sustaining the existence of the physical reality. Thus, it becomes a high vibratory tool, a very, very, in a sense, naked reflection of the mentality that has been ordered into existence and put into orderly existence by the consciousness itself. Thus, an affinity for crystal will exhibit a high degree of compatibility between the mentality and the non-physical consciousness. Affinity to astrology will exhibit a high degree of compatibility between the mentality and the emotional vibrational level of consciousness. The idea of the majority of the other forms of sensing, in terms of tool using, leaf reading, palmistry, card reading, rune reading, anything that describes the idea of a line, a configuration, or a shape, specifically, will be a reflection of compatibility, an affinity, for the mentality to itself, in a sense, a reflection of the orderliness of the mentality itself, the idea of translation, and a direct link into the imagination mechanism. Thus you will find that within these ideas are represented the shape or configuration reading, the mental thought process, physicality and imagination, the astrological type of sensing, or vibrational pattern sensing, the connection to the emotionality pattern of the personality, the understanding of vibration and movement, emotion, energy motion, and the crystal gazing, direct sensing knowingness, and what you call channeling, specifically, reflective of the idea of an affinity, and a representational symbol of the belief structure of the personality, as we have defined this, the thought, emotion, and belief structure to be the three facets of the personality prism, the artificial construct, and thus, these categories will represent, to some degree, the idea of the approach, the overall methodology of the being that is exploring itself in this physical life. You will find that, as you begin to understand all of these ideas, all of these metaphysical ideas, as something that is now becoming blended within the knowingness of yourself and the transformation from third to fourth density, they will take on different aspects. In the second half of this particular chapter, we will discuss the effects of this blending, as we have done in the previous chapters for each respective subject. This will be the termination of section one of this chapter of the work. Section 2. Now, allow us to discuss this idea of metaphysics when viewed through the perspective of the fourth density reality that you are creating in your society at this time. 
all the ideas we have discussed in the various levels through which these symbols channel themselves through the personality into physical reality will all begin to become far more personalized. As we have said, everyone is channeling, in a sense. Therefore, this idea will embody the facilitation of a conscious recognition of the higher self and direct communication with that portion of the consciousness. You will find that the individuals upon your planet can begin, in a sense, to actually see themselves as the symbols they have previously held to be outside themselves to represent the abilities they were expressing. Now, this does not mean that you will become a deck of cards, a cup of tea laves, no. But you will understand. You will identify completely with the reflection that the archetypal symbol represents and in so identifying, you will become one with the energy that you used from your subconscious mass conscious level to form that symbol for yourself. In other words, you will see exactly how this particular symbol was chosen by yourself, what it reflects, why you chose it, and in this sensing, in this direct sensing, you can allow yourself to remove the need for that specific tool and simply function within a constantly knowing state that can always be in touch with its own reasons, its own extensions of thought, its own extensions of feeling, and its own shared beliefs within the overall mass consciousness as it is transforming. Thus, you will find there will be an ability for metaphysics to become the physics of the land, in a sense, as we have already described. Physicists will, on your planet, begin to discover that consciousness is a factor. They will begin, and have begun, to some extent, to include consciousness into their equations, and the parallels between the now existent forms of metaphysics will begin to grow between that and physics as you understand it, until the two, in a sense, will become one idea. Now, Realize that this may be appalling to both physicists and metaphysicians upon your planet, to some degree, but this is only because of the judgments that they hold for each other. You can simply recognize that it is the same exploration, from polarized viewpoints, physics is becoming metaphysics, metaphysics is becoming physics. Physicists are becoming metaphysicians by allowing themselves to recognize the active participation that consciousness a non-tangible substance, plays in the physical world. Metaphysicians are becoming physicists by allowing themselves to recognize that what they have previously held to be sacrosanct, beyond the idea of what they judge to be mere physicality, is in fact blending into an ecstatic explosion of an enjoyment of physicality that recognizes that physical existence is also spirit. It is no less than non-physical existence and the idea of applying reasoning is just as valid, and just as livable as any ideas that would tend to obscure or hide the understanding of your own consciousness, as has been implied by the term that you have most often used to describe metaphysics, and that is occult, which means hidden. Therefore, both ideas are blending because they are allowing each other into each other's realm of experience. Both are recognizing that experience itself is the defining factor and that all the ideas of proof from the physics side, and non-ability of proof, or the necessity of occultism, from the metaphysical side are both extremes of viewpoints which have only been created from the judgment from one side to another. Physics is in harmony with the experiential self, even the non-physical experiential self and metaphysics are in harmony with not only the non-physical but the physical self and it can be understood that there really is no difference between the two, non-physical and physical reality, except as you have created the idea. Therefore, the final perspective, in a sense, though not ultimately final, but only from this particular exploration of this particular dichotomy in this particular sequence of life as you know it, will be to understand, physically and metaphysically, everything in your world as ideas, simply ideas, perspectives, points of view. Now, from that it will be then extrapolated that, since we have already, from the physics and metaphysical point of view, understood that space-time is an extension of the consciousness, of the perceptions, and therefore, in many ways, an illusion, except where you wish to apply it, you can now understand that all things, therefore, are simultaneous, 
and all space is here, present, here and now. Therefore, once you become aware that both physics and metaphysics simply are the creation of ideas, you can then see that the next step will be to recognize the self as an idea, and in this way, each individual will be able to function as their own physicist and metaphysician simultaneously, recognizing the validity of the non-physical and physical realms, the equality of the non-physical and physical realms, and therefore, the ability to abide and live in both consciously, simultaneously, being both and neither at the same time. Now, allow me to illuminate that this is one of the reasons why, what you term to be your Western culture, when it encountered what you call your American Indian culture, could not find common ground to understand each other. Recognize that American Indian culture existed consciously, both in physical and non-physical reality, whereas Western culture, as you call it, had only assumed the physical reality to be real, and the rest to be simply flights of fancy or imagination, and not to be paid much attention to as having any possible way of having an effect upon your lives. This will have been, and still is, the idea of a dichotomy between those two cultures. And the reason why they met at the time that they did, in the timing that they created, that they co-created, was for the beginning of the blending that you are now beginning to explore within yourselves, and the merging of the two realities, physical and non-physical, outer awareness and dream consciousness, through the link and the bridge we have defined as the imagination, so that your world can become a product of your own conviction, your own directiveness, your own self-empowerment, your own freedom of choice. These always exist regardless of what any physicists or metaphysicians may wish to tell you through self-ego gratification. There is no one way to do anything, there is no one path. If there were, there would only be one person. Recognize, there are as many paths as there are individuals. In fact, each individual is a path, and you will know that the idea of the need for specified physics and specified metaphysics will blend, simply, into the ongoing process of experience itself. Experience itself, the experiencing of the all that is that each and every one of you individually and collectively are. Dr. Chandley, I'd like to ask you a question about two psychological terms that we use to describe energy, called transference of energy and counter-transference of energy. How is the transference of energy happening within the channel as you, from your point of view, and what is the counter-transference of that energy as it affects the channel? The association? Thank you. In a basic foundational sense, the answer to both of your questions is the same, and it is something which is still little understood in your society, and this is, however, something which you think you recognize as being with you all the time and the one word that defines and describes the mechanism which gives rise to both that transference and counter-transference is what you call imagination. Understand that imagination is a dimension unto itself, and in that dimension it is the hyperspace, the all that is, the center point through which and in which any blendings, co-creations, transferences, exchanges, alterations, take place. Therefore, Within the dimension of imagination, I blend with the physical consciousness of the physical channel and form the third personality, which you are perceiving, which is the combination of my imagination consciousness and the channels. And in like manner, in the reciprocal movement, the consciousness of the physical channel goes into his own dimension of imagination. In the same way mine goes into my own dimension of imagination. Therefore, it is always a constant flux coming and going, the cause and the effect being the same event. There really is no separation. It is all one thing. There is always, automatically, polarity, even though you are experiencing a coming and a going. It is simply emerging and becoming the dimension of imagination itself, in which any seemingly perceptual exchanges can take place. Is this clarifying the idea to some degree for you? Dr. Chandley, Yes. In the holographic model, for instance, when we start with the beam or the seed, and split into the imagination, would the reference beam then be the imagination? The association, 
In a sense, understand that the interference pattern caused by the original beam of your higher consciousness and the reference beam of your physical personality, the interference pattern is actually the dimension which bridges the two, which links the two. This is why we have said that your imagination is the bridge and the link between your higher consciousness, or your dream self, and your physical consciousness, or your physical reality, your mentality. The interference pattern created by the original beam and the reference beam is the interaction of the two beams, and as we have always said, you are neither the original beam nor actually the reference beam, but the interaction of the two polarities. Thus, imagination and the dimension of imagination is actually what you are. Any transference and counter-transference is simply the activation and co-blending of both individuals involved in the process, both consciousnesses involved in the interaction becoming the interaction itself. Thus, where I come from, and where the physical channel's consciousness goes is into the center of being the interaction itself. Now, we have defined it, many times, as an analogy, as if the physical consciousness of the channel becomes lost in a daydream. This is one physicalized analogy for being in the dimension of imagination. But simply recognize, all that is happening are the expressions of polarities from both consciousnesses being the interaction itself, being the dimensional reality, the universe of the interaction itself, being at the center, at the source together, and recognizing it. You follow me? Dr. Chandley, yes, absolutely. Thank you. Is there a place within the physical being that we can actually visually see, from where the imagination is presented? The association, you may understand that it can, to some degree, be viewed as being the center point of a trinity, three-sided pyramidal structure, the base points of which are centered in the pineal gland, the pituitary gland, and what you call the base portion of the brain, at the junction of the spinal cord and the physical brain. Now, though this may not geometrically describe what you call a three-sided pyramid, in an energy sense it will, and you can simply recognize that the center point will be the black hole, in a sense, the doorway, the gateway, the white hole, in a sense, both black and white hole, in and out, transference point, in the center the corpus callosum between the two hemispheres. You will recognize, you will come to recognize, there is a small group of cells in the center of the brain, touching either side of the corpus callosum, which will be responsible for the regulation or the translation of the black-white hole energy into your physical brain, and from these two core seeds the brain will grow. You follow? Dr. Chandley, yes. So, is part of the counter-transference of that energy happening through that center or corpus callosum in the brain? The association, all of it. Dr. Chandley, all of the transference of energy also. The association, all of it. Now, you may perceive that there are black and white holes in the center of every cell in your body as well, and it may seem to be an infusion coming from everywhere and nowhere in particular, but as you define the idea of your physical brain representing the controlling network of your mentality, which represents the projection of your consciousness into physicality, you can simply recognize the primary black-white hole in the center of your brain to be where all of the transference and counter-transference is being created. Dr. Chandley, would there be any way that that counter-transference and transference could be negative? The association, yes. Dr. Chandley, how? The association, simply, as it is created, it will always still, because you are physical beings, have to proceed through the prism of the artificial personality construct, and the beliefs within that personality construct may filter some of those ideas, either in a positive or a negative way. The initial point of transference is neither, or both, positive and negative, but the feedback can set up, to some degree, a resonance, a positive or negative harmonic resonance can be set up by reflecting through the prism where the beliefs, emotions, and thoughts then become connected to the occurrence that is happening with the transference. You follow me? Dr. Chandley, yes. So, 
in order for there to be positive transference and counter-transference. The association, there must be allowance in the personality. Dr. Chandley, of the medium or the being who is. The association, yes. Allowance and trust. This is the opening of the clarifying of the personality prism, which allows there to be positive harmony in expression between the physical personality and the initial transference point, the higher consciousness. A blending. Dr. Chandley, so, there's no way that that energy system could bypass the personality construct of the medium. The association. There can be varying degrees of what seems to be a bypass, but some portion of the original consciousness must always be there, except in the case of what you call a complete and total walk-in. You follow me? Dr. Chandley, yes, and then it would no longer be channeling. It would be... The association, an exchange. Dr. Chandley, of energy. The association, yes. Dr. Chandley, is there something that you would suggest for those mediums who are integrating their personality construct so as not to filter the information as much, and to have more of a positive transference and counter-transference? The association, simply, first of all, that they are offering their channeling out of service, out of unconditional love, not needing to take anyone's power away not needing to make or force anyone to do anything, but allowing them their free will, and in so trusting their higher consciousness, allowing whatever will come through to be a part of the unfoldment, no matter whether their physicalized personality thinks it likes it or not. You follow me? Dr. Chandley, yes, I do. Thank you. The Association, we will thank each and every one of you, once again, for the sharing you have been willing to create with us, we will, until next week of your time, as you cow time, bid you a fond good evening. Email this blog this. Share to Twitter, share to Facebook, share to Pinterest. Labels. Boss links to this post create a link.